Here we go. Finally, no more talk. Can Dwayne Rollison lead the Oilers again? It's the first game since May 27th. Ken Ward, the youngest goalie to start in the finals since Patrick Watt 20 years ago. Doug Wade facing his old team. Game one. Both teams came out hitting. Mike Commodore played in the last final with the Flames. Hammers Ryan Smith. Meanwhile, the Oilers captain, Jason Smith, smokes Rod Brindamore along the boards, then hammers Justin Williams in front of the net to break up a scoring chance. Oh, by the way, no penalty. But the Oilers would get the first break. Aaron Ward's Pass in the middle, picked up by Yaroslav Spachik, lets it go. Fernando Pisani with a rebound, his 10th of the playoffs. Oilers open to scoring in the final, up 1-0 after 20. Second period, we've heard lots about the abuse Rollison has faced from the crease. Justin Williams took a page out of the Ducks playbook. Rollison gets in his grill. Ward, meanwhile, was solid. Steve Stales back at his stop. So is the rebound by Ethan Morrow. Ward faced the most action early, but he couldn't do much about this. Off the massive scramble, Nicholas Wallin in the right of the crease. Pucks in his hand. They call a penalty shot. The Oilers go with the defense with Chris Pronger. And this, folks, is the first successful penalty shot in the Stanley Cup final ever. The Kane sarcastically applauding the goal. They're going nuts at Rexall. 2 0 Oilers. The week off may have actually helped Edmonton. There was more. Morrow, long shot that somehow gets by Ward. It looked pretty weak until the replay where you see it went in off Aaron Ward's backside. Morrow second, 3 0. But the Canes finally answered back less than a minute later. Williams shot will trickle through Rollison. He'll want this back because Brindamore's behind him with an open net. His 10th of the playoffs. Canes on the board down 3-1. Then late in the period it was nuts with the Oilers shorthanded on the turnover. Ryan Smith, yes, Mr. Oiler on the breakaway but he shoots it wide at the other end. Williams to Eric Stahl. What a poke check by Rollison. Will Oilers still down a man. 2-1 Steos to Smith who shoots it wide again. Still 3-1 after a couple but not for long. The Canes came out flying to start the third. Buck 40 in. It's Waite over to Ray Whitney. Great shot on the short side. His seventh of the playoffs. Canes down just one. 3-2, and that didn't last long either. Canes on the power play. Mark Recchi will streak in. He will be stopped. Whitney is not. The Oilers never blow leads. We're tied at three. Meanwhile, Ward was absolutely on fire. Somehow stops Stales, even though it was tipped at least twice, and denies Radek Dvorak on the rebound. Then Oilers power play. Smith to Alex Hemsky. Great bad save, Ward. That was big because it is. On that same Oilers power play, Stales can't keep it in. It's Williams on the breakaway. Shorthanded goal. Six of the playoffs. Kane score four straight. They're up 4-3 and Ward was still sick. Ryan Smith to Sean Horkov. Wow. Wow. What a save. He reached over with probably the save of the year. But the Oilers had to find a way to beat him again and they did with some skill. Jared Stoll to Hemsky. That is outstanding. Fifth of the postseason. We're tied at four, but all that was overshadowed by this. Andrew Ladd in a collision falls into Rollison. His right leg bends back into the post. Uh oh. Rollison was down for a while and left the game, folks. They're saying he's done for the series. Ty Cogler, remember him? Edmonton's hopes resting on him. Mm, final bit of the regulation. He's behind the net, gets his signals crossed with Jason Smith. Oh no! Rod Brandemore puts it in the empty net with 32 seconds left. The Canes go up 5 4. Oilers pull Cogler right away, had a few chances. Mark Andre Berger on stop once missed the second time and then on the rebound it's hork dropped again cam ward with 34 saves 17 in the third period when he was peppered the canes take game one five four this was a phenomenal contest and we knew goaltending would be the story but not in this way can the oilers respond without rolls and here we go wall to wall coverage and rally here is steve coolius In one of the most amazing Stanley Cup final games in recent memory, the Carolina Hurricanes pulled off one of the most amazing comebacks. Trailing 3 0 in the second period, they scored late in that frame and then four times in the third, winning by a score of 5 4, knocking out Dwayne Rollison in the process. With more on the injured Oilers netminder, here's Jordy Weedman. The Edmonton Oilers have a few things to worry about after game one of the Stanley Cup final. First, they lost 5-4. Dwayne Rollison's injury is paramount, and they blew a 3-0 lead. The bottom line is they trail the Stanley Cup final 1-0. The important thing for us as a team, and I know we can, I feel very confident that we can, is bounce back from it. We've, I've been in this situation, as I was saying to the players before, with St. Louis, when, fears, when uh, now... Uh, Broadcaster Nick Kiprios went into uh, Fierzy and John Casey had been out as long as uh, 
any of our two goalies have been. I got the, the puck wide from, from Whitney. I think I might have had a step on him a little bit and um, just tried to, to cut to the net and uh, he hit me, knocked me off balance a little right in front of Rolls and I didn't have anywhere to go. So I mean, hopefully he's all right. We got to find a way through a little adversity and uh, in this, uh, you know, obviously he's a backbone, and uh, I know Juice and uh, Kongs have played, uh, you know, in practice really hard. And uh, you know, if that's uh, the opportunity they get, then uh, we stick with it. At the other end of the rink, Cam Ward was sensational in his Cup final debut with a 34 save performance, including the Oilers' last scramble in the final seconds. Ryan Smith made it, made it obviously a great play uh, through the legs uh, to, to pass back door and. It's a play where I, I, I dropped and then um, and just out of, out of pure desperation just threw my glove out there and I was very fortunate to make the save. The last action Ty Conklin saw was a 16 save 4-2 victory on the last day of the regular season, April 17th. His goaltending wasn't the problem in relief, it's the stick handling. We got on a four check and it went uh, D to D and I think the goalie kind of, they had a little mix up. I'm not sure who the other defenseman was. but. I think they had just a little mix-up who was going to get it, and it ended up just squirting out. And obviously the goalie's behind the net, so it was just a matter of putting it in an empty net. So I won't see, won't get too many of those, but I'll definitely take it. I just, you know, it's, I just, uh, just froze with it a little bit. You know, it's, uh, wasn't the play I wanted to make, obviously. We were communicating, but I mean, uh, you know, just, uh, it's just something that happens. I mean. Uh, I could probably be uh, be a little bit louder and, and uh, make make it an easier play for him. We've been lucky here in the playoffs, coming from behind to, to win games, to win games late and late in the third period too. But uh, we've got to be much better. We know they're going to be better, and we've got to match it. Oilers defenseman Chris Pronger is known for his shot. This time, he had a little more room to move in. The first ever successful penalty shot in the Stanley Cup Final history doesn't mean much to him right now. Uh, yeah, I don't think we wanted to get too far ahead of ourselves, but uh, you know, just. Uh, had a couple things I wanted to do, and, and uh, that kind of opened up. I looked five hole and kind of just shot a little blocker, and uh, fortunate enough to go in. The Oilers have now lost the opening game of a series for the third time in these playoffs. They'll be forced to try and become the 16th team in league history to recover from that opening loss and still win the championship series. The last team to do it was Tampa Bay in 2004. Reporting from the 2006 Stanley Cup Final in Raleigh, North Carolina, Jordy Weedman, the score. And joining me now is Pierre Lebrun of Canadian Press and the Scores Hockey Insider. Pierre, first of all, let's talk about the hit Bergeron hitting Ladd going into Rolison. Did you have a problem with the play as far as Ladd is concerned? Did he try to get out of the way? I didn't think he tried hard enough. I also think Mark Andre Bergeron, if he looks back at it, maybe wishes he did something different. But I think Ladd could have slowed himself down or tried to evade uh, Rolison. He didn't.